What is up, diehards? Wes Monell in the building for AWOL Sports. Drew LaQuesta in the house. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is a 2020 NFL season preview. Our projections for every division. First through last with records. When we look at the schedule, if we give one team a win, we cross-reference that by giving the other team a loss. So we keep track here. That's how it should go, and that's how we roll. The AFC South, last season, the Texans and Titans made the playoff picture. The Colts made it two years ago, but fell out after Andrew Luck called it a career. The Jaguars wind up starting a rookie QB over the veteran they signed, and they moved on from half a dozen starters this offseason. It's kind of weird to say, kind of weird to look up, but the Jaguars just completely rebuilt. So, uh, We'll start at the top, though. Checking out the Texans with head coach Bill O'Brien. There's a majority perception out there. Perhaps understandable when it comes to trade compensation. More so perplexing when looking at his success as a playoff mainstay in four of the past five seasons. We knew they were cap-strapped when they shipped DeAndre Hopkins out of town. That was a move that helped them pave the way for a Deshaun Watson extension. They look like they're taking a page out of the Chiefs' book with a speedy offense. They'll roll out David Johnson, a comeback player of the year candidate. The great J.J. Watt, back, healthy, another comeback player of the year candidate. They also extended linebacker Zach Cunningham. Uh, Between Watt and Cunningham, they have to lead a better defensive effort for a bottom eight defense against the run. Third downs as well. They signed a pair of former first-round cornerbacks, Vernon Hargreaves and Bradley Roby. The hope there is to not rank as the fourth-worst pasty again. I have H-Town getting 10 wins, clinching the division due to a tiebreaker. You, Drew, you have them at 9-7, and seven, huh? Yeah, I got Houston at 9-7 and seven just because I feel like they have – Switch the scheme a little bit on offense. Now, you mentioned D Hop leaving, or at least being traded by O'Brien. Um, yeah, they got some speed, man, but I think it's going to take time for this offense to click for a while. I mean, they did a pretty good job getting those receivers, to be honest. They probably did the best job they could. Um, you know, hey, getting Will Fuller back, but then they get Brandon Cooks, a receiver that we both like. He was a, he was a Ram, and he's, he's always been productive. Uh, and they get Randall Cobb. I mean, Randall Cobb's, you know, Randall Cobb's shown that he can he can produce, whether he's the first option, second, or third. Um, I think Houston still makes it, you know, nine and seven. Uh, I have them as a seven seed. The coaches come back. It's their third year together with all their coaches. Um, Bill O'Brien's Colin plays. Again, ninth last year, ninth in rush yards. So they're actually a pretty solid Russian team. Uh, they were top 10 on third downs, uh, 43% converting those third downs. They're actually a pretty good yard per play number also. They were tied for seventh for yards per play. It's one of the best it's been in the past three years, too. With Deshaun Watson, they're not really hurting themselves. They don't really turn the ball over, so they're pretty solid on giveaways. I definitely do see my opportunities uh, in the past offense. It has been kind of pedestrian. I know Deshaun Watson's great, but overall as a team, the pass offense hasn't really produced. But I think with that talent, they have a quarterback. Obviously, they paid him. Uh, They got some new receivers. Their plan, letting D-Hop go and and signing these other two receivers, hopefully keeping Will Fuller safe, was to kind of shed the ball around. They had two running backs last year. They got David Johnson. I think they have two good running backs still this year with Duke Johnson running behind him. Uh, They just need to improve on that scoring a little bit, too. There's definitely an opportunity to improve in scoring points. They're not terrible, but I believe if they can breach at least top 10, Deshaun won't have to keep playing that hero ball as much. You know, offensively, they have some O-line issues. They made a great move in the right direction, getting Tunzel. He actually ranked fourth as a pass-protecting offensive tackle by ESPN standards. But still, as a team, they gave up the eighth most sacks, so... Deshaun's one of the more accurate QBs in the league. He drops down near the bottom when it comes to the red zone, and that's kind of frightening after losing a big target in Lorenzo like like D-Hop was. Uh, But in 2018, his wide receiver receiver group was actually ranked number 22 
as far as creating separation by next gen. Last year, they were 31st. Um, so Bill O'Brien calling plays last year. Uh, he actually said they're gonna, the, the duties are going to move over to Tim Kelly. Tim Kelly is their quarterback coach. Um, I mean, he spends the most time with Deshaun. Maybe the offense clicks a little bit better. Uh, the biggest switch I see, I think it should be defensively. Um, I believe in Deshaun. He got paid. I'm glad he got paid. He's so good with the offensive structure, and he's good at making things happen when the play breaks down. But I think it's a little too heavy on the offense. In 2018, the defense was ranked 12th defending yards. They were fifth allowing points. Also, that was actually Deshaun's best year, 26 touchdowns to nine interceptions. And that was his only 4,000-yard season. You know, we thought the three-way tie with Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson, and Kyler Murray getting sacked 48 times last year was a lot. That year in 2018, he was sacked 62 times. Ooh. What I'm saying is Deshaun's talented enough. He'll get you the wins, postseason included. I just think we should stop asking him to, sh to win shootouts or comebacks all the time. We've got to fix the defense, get some studs, get some playmakers, and give the offense some balance. I hear you, man. And when you look at their schedule, Houston plays five playoff teams from last year before their week eight bye. That's, wow. that, that's not easy for anyone to face. I know it's an uphill battle, but – from what I've seen, like I said, they made four of the last five postseasons. You, you just had glowing remarks for Deshaun Watson. I think they're a battle-tested team that even if things didn't start the way that they, you know, had planned, had envisioned, they they can turn things around the second half of the year. I don't think there's – I don't think they're one of those teams that will wilt away. Uh, I, I think they're they're full of fight. So – you know, they got to get through that first half, and then I see them doing that. Uh, moving to the Tennessee Titans, they snuck into the postseason, knocking off the defending champs in New England, knocking off the top-seeded Ravens. Couldn't quite hang with Kansas City in the AFC title game, who, of course, went on to win the Super Bowl. Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, they got their payday. A.J. Brown has a target on his back now after an explosive rookie year. Corey Davis, on the other hand, enters the contract season. They added Vic Beasley. Interesting situation there. Jadavion Clowney finally signed with the team, and he lands here with the Titans. One of the most physical teams in the league. Top 10 in points scored and fewest points allowed. They scored the third most touchdowns last year, believe it or not. It's a pestering secondary that mirrors head coach Mike Vrabel. I had 9-7. and seven. You have nine and seven. What's the word? Yeah, actually, uh, last minute kind of bumped them up to 10. I gave them an extra win. Um, so I kind of flip-flopped Houston and Tennessee a little bit. So Tennessee is actually going to take the division. They're going to be the fourth seed just by that one win over Houston's nine and seven. Like you said, man, it's, it's a great brand of, uh, brand of football, just like how both of us like Buffalo. Um, super tough defense. Uh, what a performance, man, by this coaching staff, honestly. Starting Tannehill midway through the season, they beat Kansas City. They were within a field goal versus New Orleans late in the fourth. Um, so that was a close game. Beat Houston by three touchdowns, and that was after adjusting, after a three-point loss to Houston two weeks prior. Uh, I like seeing that. that. That shows me a strong coaching staff where they learn from their mistakes. I mean, losing by three and then coming back to beat the same team by three touchdowns, that's huge. Uh, later on, they go on to beat Tampa Bay. Uh, they held Tampa Bay without a touchdown. And Bill Belichick in Gillette Stadium in prime time. They got that win there, too. They got a win against Lamar Jackson in his own house. Um, they scored uh, – they beat him by 16, actually. So, as far as that separation from one of the highest scoring teams in the league, that's pretty impressive. They were actually scoreless through three and a half quarters. And – I know you said they couldn't hang with KC. You're right. They definitely couldn't hang with KC at the end. But twice, twice in that game, they did have a 10-point lead, too. So um, they're here to fight. They just couldn't pull it off. Arthur Smith and, uh, and the Titans had this offense. Great rushing team, great scoring team. 
made Tannehill look like a top 10 quarterback. They were tied for fourth in yards per play. They keep the ball in their pocket. They don't give it away. Their pass protection was highly rated by ESPN. The only thing is the defense is stout, but I like their turnout turnover differential. I like the points allowed. But they, they do give up a, a good amount of yards. So it's kind of that bend and don't break. We've seen that from Green Bay a lot of times. Uh, I think they need to improve a little bit more on the uh, pressure. Last year wasn't uh, that great pressuring the quarterback and turning them into the sacks. I know you talked about them picking up Beasley and Clowney. So what I like is they had an issue last year of getting to the quarterback, and they definitely addressed that issue. One of the big losses, though, is Jarrell Casey. Jarrell Casey goes to Denver. That's a five-time pro bowler. And they do lose Jack Conklin to Cleveland. That's an all-pro tackle, too. But, I mean, if you look at what they replace him with, they still have some studs on the O-line, too. Taylor Lewan is coming back into the season healthy this time. So he uh, missed time last year. Hopefully he won't miss that much time. Conklin's replacement as the tackle actually played a lot last year. They played a lot of extra O-lineman sets. Dennis Kelly, pro football focus, actually rated him a 71. And you know that's you know that's pretty above average as far as PFF ranks and their standards go. And then they drafted another tackle. They drafted a tackle guard combo, uh, Isaiah Wilson, in the first round from Georgia. Definitely known, obviously, the running back from Georgia. DeAndre Swift, most of those big chunk yards, they were running behind Isaiah Wilson. Now, he's had some run-ins with the law. Hopefully he can fix that and focus because, I mean, he's a beast in the trenches when you see him pass blocking and run blocking. Uh, pretty hard to move that guy. The schedule's not that tough. Tannehill was actually 3-1 and one in the division last year, 4-3 and three versus playoff teams. I got, I got to like the Titans here, man. Um, I, I like what they're doing. The only thing is the question of Tannehill. Can he duplicate that performance again last year? I know he struggled in the past, but I think being in this right situation with the right coach is very important for a quarterback. He actually had the best quarterback rating last year. He was number three in completion percentage. I think it's a good fit. They filled their need for the pass rush. I think they, if they can uh, be top 10 or top 12 or situation football third and fourth downs i think uh they're gonna be pretty tough to beat again i hear you i i felt like i was on the ryan Tannehill island all by myself for years saying he wasn't the issue in miami and yeah i know he's got a couple injuries but i wouldn't declare him sad brad sam bradford quite yet and then um i love that o-line so i'm with you i have him in the playoffs as well as a wild card i think that's a tough division uh, as for their schedule, three straight battles. They got Pittsburgh, Buffalo, and Houston. Then a bye to recover from that, and they're going to need that. Then, man, Indy, Baltimore, and then Indy. That's not going to be an easy month. And then they could very well alternate wins. I was looking at their schedule. They might go back and forth, uh, win-loss, win-loss throughout the season to get to what I think is a 9-7 and seven season for them. But like I said, I'm with you. That's a playoff squad, in my opinion, too. Indianapolis, the next team in the division here, truly feels like they're a quarterback away from being contenders. They proved it with Andrew Luck. Jacoby Brissett got a chance, went 7-9. and nine. They made the playoffs two years ago, as did Phillip Rivers, who they hope gives them enough. They have two good running backs. Even if T.Y. Hilton goes through more injuries, they have a few wideouts that they like a lot. Maybe Jack Doyle, the tight end, gets more looks and takes advantage with Rivers throwing the ball. I think all of these skill positions have a lot to prove individually. But they're set up for success behind an elite O-line, arguably the best. And I'm a fan of Coach Frank Wright. He and O.C. Nick Sirianni, they got to work with Rivers with the Chargers, so familiarity there, that can only help the cause. The Colts did three things well. They ran the ball, stopped the run, and forced turnovers. I don't know if Xavier Rhodes is going to be good for their young secondary, but pairing Justin Houston and DeForest Buckner, smart move. I have Darius Leonard winning Defensive Player of the Year, by the way. I... I can't say I'm entirely confident in my 10-6 and 6 record for them. They better take advantage of the first six weeks 
because they have nothing but challenging games back to back to back to back the rest of the season. I just like their foundation to handle some adversity. And to be honest, after our convo on Phillip Rivers last month, Drew, I'm surprised you had the miss in the playoffs. Yeah, well, the only reason I do have the miss in the playoffs is because of the tiebreaker. I know you have some teams on that bubble too. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's kind of hard with all these teams emerging in the AFC, especially with the two strong ones in their division. Uh, I definitely think they make some strides, but just not enough to, even with that extra playoff spot, earn one of those wild cards. So uh, I'm with you on, on the coaches. I definitely like this coaching staff. Frank Reich had 10 wins with Andrew Luck in 2018, seven wins last year without him. I thought that was pretty solid figuring Luck hung him to dry two weeks before the season started. Hmm. So, you know, they played the Chargers week one pretty tough. They, they let that win slip. I thought they had that game. They had a win at Tennessee, a win at Kansas City on Sunday night. That was with Mahomes playing before his injury. Um, another win against Houston. But they did also drop the ball on opportunities to beat Oakland and Miami at home, and then Jacksonville a second time with their rookie quarterback. So positives in a few places where they fell short. Like you said, man, Sirianni with Reich, they had the seventh best rushing offense. Not great against the pass, not great as a total as far as uh, what they let up in yards, and they definitely got to put more points on the board. Right in the middle, 16th as far as scoring in the NFL. So I'm not saying Rivers is as good as luck and they're going to get back to those 10 wins. That's why I do have, him, have them at nine. But I think as a whole, like you said, the, the pieces on defense and some new additions on the offensive side of the ball are going to at least piece them for a playoff push. Now, the defense overall is mediocre, I thought. They did shine versus the run. Um, but – I think they have some production. you got to bump the offense production and keep their defense on the field a, a little less. I know they lost Eric Ebron, but you mentioned Jack Doyle. He actually had a better production year over Ebron. Um, when he has the ball, I've seen him with the ball, and, and he moves pretty quick for a 6'6", 260 guy. He's not afraid to initiate contact. I always see him lowering the shoulder, punishing tacklers. Maybe that's a kind of Hunter Henry-like weapon for Phillip Rivers this year. Um, I like the addition of Jonathan Taylor. We had a quick conversation before we come. We came on here. Um, he was awarded the best running back in college twice. That's one of the best fits I see in the NFL from the draft. His NFL comp to me is, is, is actually MJD. So I like the kid a lot. You mentioned DeForest Buckner. I think he was arguably one of San Francisco's best D linemen. You're talking a 6'7", 300-pound guy that moves like an outside linebacker. Pair him with Justin Houston and Darius Leonard. That's pretty scary. Um, I know we talked about them being terrible on on the pass defense, and I think that pressure from those three D linemen and or in the front seven will definitely help out creating pressure for the quarterback. Uh, Rivers against this division is twenty one and eight. Frank Reich the past two years is seventeen and fifteen. Hopefully that evens out to more wins. Uh, you've talked about their home schedule. That's exactly what I have home and away early, they got to start fast, man. They have the opportunity to win at Jacksonville. They have the opportunity to surprise Minnesota since Minnesota is starting so many new starters on defense. They got the Jets and then opportunities for Chicago, Cleveland, Cincinnati, right before they hit the bye. And then you mentioned after the bye, man, it's going to be tough. So if they don't start quick, you know, they might be, they might be kind of falling out of that playoff fight a lot sooner than hoped this season i think jonathan taylor is all that he's hyped up to be i think rivers cleans up the turnover a little bit behind the great line i think the weapons are good enough but if ty does go down they could be struggling they could be pretty deep in the water with that pass catching crew defensively i think buckner continues his pro bowl-esque ways to help this defense stay stout i just think eventually they do fall short in the last few games with other teams contending for that seventh spot I get it. It's going to be competitive this year. Uh, there's going to be a lot more teams in the hunt, a lot more fan bases excited to be in the hunt with that extra spot in both conferences. It's pretty cool. I'm excited for that too. I'm, I'm not sure if Duval County is excited for this season. I, I just don't know. 
Jacksonville, they get one win from me. I just don't see it. I like Gardner Minshew. But if he struggles, if the team isn't winning, there's a little hype, not a lot, but a little bit, with six-rounder Jake Luton and new OC Jay Gruden. They're rolling with undrafted running back James Robinson. Expect a lot of targets for DJ Chark. LaVisca Chenault, he's rumored to be utilized in every way imaginable. If they can get into the red zone, if, it seems like they like Tyler Eifert there. This was one of the worst third down teams on both sides of the ball. CJ Henderson, he's our first round pick at corner. There's room for optimism. Joe Schobert, free agent signing, joins Miles Jack in the middle of that defense. I just don't see enough on either side of the ball. I like that they committed to a youth movement, fully immersed in the rebuild. They're going to trust the process and possibly land Trevor Lawrence. Good old sunshine. Again, I have one win. Jaguars, when I look at their schedule, in my opinion, I only see two winnable games outside the division. I understand any given Sunday, but they have a lot of proving to do before I can even get there with them. Drew, did, did you wind up at 3-13 and 13 for the Jaguars? Yeah, I gave the Jaguars three wins. Pretty hard to see them progressing any more than three wins. I, I did kind of like the trend before they started throwing all these players of theirs away, and they're productive players too. So, I mean, looks like they're kind of clean in house. I didn't think they needed to, but man, after the, the, the trade for – or after the release of Leonard Fournette, that was super surprising. So I don't know where they're going to get the help from, especially defensively with the trade of Ngakwe also. Um, I do like Doug Maroney, you know, returning again. Um, still looking for his franchise quarterback. Maybe he found him in Gardner Minshew, maybe not. But he got nine, he got nine wins with Kyle Orton. He got ten wins with Blake Bortles, including two playoff games. It could be Gardner, but who knows? It's just a small sample size last year. But for what he put on the field, it was pretty good. Six and six for a record starting, 21 touchdowns, six interceptions, 61 completion rating, uh, 91 rating. So that's it's a pretty solid rookie year. Um, they have a great center in Brandon Linder. But as a unit, their O-line definitely needs to improve in pass protection. Uh, I know Jay Gruden has made it happen a couple times uh, with Cincy and Dalton. And then in, uh, with the Redskins and, and Cousins, you know, always having like a timeshare committee back field. Um, some players in the pass catching category, he did it. Had Dalton's career high in touchdowns, 33 in Cincy. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis was running with Geo. And then he had uh, Cousins go for 25 touchdowns to start his stint as a solid starter with Pierre, Deshaun, Jordan Reed. Both of those offenses were actually top 10 in yards and points. So we've seen Jay Gruden do it. It's a little bit less of a cast here with, like you said, the undrafted free agent. But I think they do have some pretty solid wide receivers. Um, I like Minshew. He could definitely move a little bit. I think he's just as good as passer as Baker. Um, he'll definitely have some weapons to work with, but almost every other thing that I like about this team is gone. Calais is gone. And Gakwe is gone. AJ Bouye is gone. Fournette is gone. I mean, this is a pretty tough task. Schobert is great, an all pro linebacker, but he's kind of paired with a very immature Miles Jack. That's their only hope, I think, for this defense, unless Gardner is plays out of his mind and, and he ends up being one of the one of the franchise quarterbacks that Doug Maroney's looking for. I really don't see too much offense with production. So yeah, I definitely do have him at three wins. But like you said, man, even three might be a little too high. Yeah, man. And I guess most of us could understand the Jalen Ramsey trade, but I mean, vet after vet after vet. Uh like I said. I, in hindsight, I can appreciate them just fully committing to the youth movement. Fine. Uh, but 
hand in hand. That's why you have three wins for them, and that's why I have one. 